What's going on today? We are going to showcase these solder slugs. Lugs? Slugs? Lugs. Solder lugs. Uh, these things um, made my life a whole lot easier when I'm working with devices that were previously bent or handled by somebody without proper experience or even proper equipment. Um, it's not surprising to me to get a flash drive or a memory card where uh, pads had been torn off because uh, the chip was being attempted to be removed or uh, it was bent and due to pressure and flexing of the board the bond didn't held up and the pad from the board got ripped out so today we're going to be using these things i'll show you what they look like they look really really cool these are tiny tiny pre-cut pads that you can uh, glue onto uh, the board or the chip whichever is missing one and then it will help you make broken connection great again let's get to the video guys but before we do hit that thumbs up and leave a comment for the algorithm so that the video gets more views what we got here is a Lexar professional I see a lot of these cards on this channel guys once again I'm gonna go over uh, this unit and explain biggest issues that these things have so look in the microscope we see the way they design these flash drives mm, sorry these memory cards and uh, one thing that sticks out right away is how uh, curved already this is that's caused by uh, flexing bending we can see that by applying pressure to this end we have a lift off between these pads and the board it's clearly separating there my guess would be that if we don't have a cracked controller here which looks like we don't we will be able to do a little bit of diagnostics on this device those of you who follow this channel would know that when the, the device has a disconnected memory from the controller it uh, will get uh, the device booting to uh, ROM mode aka safe mode and uh, the recognition of the unit will be based on the type of a controller it uses. If I power on the device, we're gonna see not a 64 gigabyte unit, but we're gonna see something different. We're gonna see something around seven and a half gigs, 7.6 gigabytes. How did I know that? Well, I knew that guys, because that's how a controller of this card gets recognized when the NAND is disconnected. So chances are the board is fine. It just has a physical break between the NAND and the board. Can this be fixed? Absolutely. This is my new preferred way of marking them. Uh, using a marker is something that alcohol and a mix of flux can eventually uh, remove. So this is a more permanent solution. Flux. And the fume extraction is on. You know, at this point, I don't think there is any issue uh, with the lower chip. Just from my own experience, I know that most of the time the problem happens with the uh, top chip. So to save us some time, we're just going to work with those two pads. These are the only two pads that we need to restore. Everything else is non-critical here. see all of these pads here uh, outside of what's in this 
four, four rectangle. It's not important. They're not connected, so we're not gonna even bother with them. But these here are important. These two, they're broken. They are linking with something, and we have to restore those traces. So the best thing we can do to restore those traces is just uh, scrape away a little bit of this mask that links to uh, the pad to expose the little tail of the trace. That's one. And that's two. This is a UV curing light. There, when it uh, turns off, that means this mask is now dry. Maybe I should have tinned those uh, traces first before adding wire to them, but it is what it is. This will do just fine as well. here where we just scraped it all right so looks like it's all nicely connected Same thing, we apply the light. Now the memory chip, when it came off, it took out a bunch of pads, lock that in there. And uh, same way, we just apply some flux. We grab some fresh solder, turn on the fume extraction. I used to be a huge fan of this paste but recently I just been getting very disappointed it's uh, super runny
hard to say if we got a link up it does kind of sit crooked maybe we'll have to actually go and do both chips but um, we will find out shortly let's just uh, get this off turn the power off you know, I'll play, plug this in um, it's disconnected as you can see there's no power going to it uh, let's go ahead and power on our USB control panel and look at this our consumption level is at 50 milliamps and when we're looking at our screen right here we no longer see a six point 7.6 uh, gigs we see 58.7 and that's the correct uh, size we're not out of the woods yet so let's just jump into uh, like UFS Explorer uh, by the way guys I just uh, picked this brand new version up I'm extremely happy about it and um, I'll go into deep review of uh, why I went with this in uh, upcoming episodes but I highly highly recommend you guys get it we have this tool showing up right here as XFAT partition if we go into let's say uh, view hex content we automatic well I mean just the fact that it got recognized as XFAT or automatically tells us that uh, it's actually seeing data and when we scroll we see these uh, different things up here and that's uh, confirmation of our device working uh, same thing I used to do here by scrolling we see the locations um, change up on the map which is amazing so if we go into our um, XFAT uh, partition we see the DCIM folder it's got two subfolders in there with JPEGs make copy and I'm gonna make a copy into virtual disk the beauty about creating uh, images into virtual disks is that uh, if uh, you're cloning up the whole thing and your device is only used to like 5% of the space your virtual machine is going to only be taking up that amount of space on the drive so if we go into um, our file system in the explorer view and locate our XFAT partition we can build a map using bitmap uh, so the bitmap is going to show us all of the active sectors that are being used and uh, this card is only 33.4 uh, gigs full so instead of imaging 60 gigs we're gonna image 35 gigs and current speed is 25 megabytes per second that's most likely not most likely but that's because uh, the card is running through monitor and the cable if we uh, put it on pause and let's say we disconnect this and I'm only gonna use um, the uh, card adapter we may be able to increase the speed a little bit close to 40 megabytes per second now um, yeah so uh, half an hour we'll have a clone of every single sector that is uh, used by bitmap on this device that's gonna consist of everything that our client wants and that's gonna be sent to them so there you have it the card is working the data is safe if you ever need data recovery services, links in the description will take you to our website where you can request such services. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comment section below. I'll see you all in the next episode.